Dr. Zambo and welcome to the Dawikudin. My guest tonight is Mr. Jigmi Rinjan, who is the Honorable Member of National Council. So thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, to straight away start uh, with, I had a conversation with Honorable Member of uh, National Council from Timpu, uh, Mr. Nima Gelsin. In two of us, we were talking about BOIC. And this is one issue that keeps uh, coming up in the National Council uh, for the last two sessions now. So, apart uh, now, what actually it signifies is that uh, the issue is coming up in the National Council as a usual mantra for the National Council members to say that uh, BOIC is illegal, illegitimate. If this is the case, then why there is no immediate closure uh, to the office? Because the office is now in full operation, <coughs> uh, people are working uh, and executing whatever plans they have as per the guidelines of economic stimulus plan. And you are still continuing to pick up this issue so without any end result. And that, uh, let me repeat the same phrase, National Council has really seen toothless. Um, good evening and good example to everybody. Uh, thank you, Dawa, for this question. BOIC is one issue which National Council raised from 12th session or 13th session. And uh, we when we discussed the ESP, Economic Stimulus Plan, and whenever we came across BOIC, there was a subject of contention. It was a subject of debate. Yes. And uh, eventually we decided to put a question to Honorable Prime Minister in our last session, 13th session. And uh, when we did put a question to Honorable Prime Minister, the basis was, as you said, on the doubtful, you know, you know, the illegality, or was it legal or was it illegal, you know, and then <coughs> uh, when we, after we put a question, Honorable Prime Minister, what he told to, in the House was, he said uh, it was, he, the government was open for discussion with NC or anybody for that matter, and if it is proven illegal, government wouldn't mind even closing down the BOIC. And then after his commitment in the House that he was open for discussion, the House was waiting for some sort of discussion initiated from the government. Ultimately, nothing came, came up. And then this time around, as a follow-up from our side, we put, we raised this issue again and then we put some recommendations. No, sir. So maybe you, if you could uh, let people know, uh, maybe one or two recommendations, because now what people feel is that uh, instead of picking this issue again and again, if it is really illegal, then it deems closure. If not, you should be letting those people working in BOIC work in peace. Because every time issue comes up and uh, the works are still going on. Uh, You're not uh, making them comfortable to execute their responsibilities. As much as NC is uh, aware of doing everything legally, we are also mindful of the fact that our economy is running through stress. You know, we don't have enough funds. Our government is still mobilizing funds. And when we have some 1.9 billion or 5 billion available in front of us, NC cannot also say blatantly to stop whatever activity the government is initiating. Because this will again lead to for the development in our economy. Uh, having said that, we can also support something if it is proven illegal. That's why, uh, as you said, uh, I'll come straight to the recommendation. We have specifically passed two recommendations today. NC as a house of review and a house where the members elected by the people, we, we want to make money available to the public. So the only option at this stage is we can outwardly tell government to close BOIC if, even if it's illegal because now we know that BOIC has already started and then they have already approved more than uh, I don't know, 200 plus projects and then uh, imagine how many employment generations this would have generated now, opportunities would have generated. Mm. Keeping all this in mind, uh, NC was very accommodating, I should say, that we want uh, our government to initiate some bills, some acts which should legalize. What we are mindful is we don't want this to be repeated in future. Uh, again, in the last session, 13th session, uh, when we deliberate on the budget, I think uh, one thing the public should also clearly understand is NC does not have final say on b money and finance bill, as you know yourself. So whatever budget, even if we stop, disapprove any budget, ultimately it up, it's up to the assembly to either approve, approve or reject our recommendations. So <clears throat> that's why when we pass the budget, it was not really a support for BOIC as such. When you pass budget, like in the earlier five-year tenure, uh, NC was against the CDG, 
Nice. Every time, nice. every time the CDG, the budget came in, there used to be a certain amount allocated on the CDG. While the house would approve the fund allocated on the CDG, we were always, you know, uh, recommending to government to change the modality, how to use the fund, who will use the fund, you know. Sir. In a similar manner, we want BOIC to, con IC to continue, but this, if this is a trend, it's quite worrisome. So, now, the legality or rather the illegality of BOIC is still debatable. But what if it, in totality, whatever the National Council members have been raising so far, and for that matter, even the opposition party kept raising that BOIC is, is illegal. If this turns out to be true, then what you are saying is that National Council members have been, National Council, uh, the institution itself has been accommodative on this issue. Would you not feel guilty by legalizing what is illegal? You are talking about recommending the government to come up with a bill and then legitimize what is illegal. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, it's, it's very disturbing. But what one point the Honorable PM kept referring was in the earlier government, uh, they have started EPIC, you know, yes. Agency for Protection of Indigenous Crafts. So similar to EPIC, they have started BOIC. And then our future governments, if they again, you know, based on the train of EPIC and BOIC this time, they might again come up with another new uh, such uh, agencies which will use government uh, fund. So in order to stop such recurrence now, yes. we, the NC, as, as a house of review, I, as a, I think we, you know, in the house of the, in the wisdom of the house, we have said, if we can have one act that will really guide any such uh, uh, repeats in future. So, in short, one can say that uh, all sound and fury is signifying nothing. Uh, it, it it might it's up to the individual and public to debate. Uh, and then the council was also so much concerned when BOS was launched last year, uh, yes. in, uh, August two thousand fourteen, uh, against the PM's uh, uh, agreement to in the in council that he he was open for discussion. We were still hoping for some discussion, and uh, let's see what comes ahead after our after we issued the two recommendations today. The government might still feel that there's no need of an act. In which case, then uh, there could be occasion where we have to really confirm the legality of BOIC. Yes, yes. So another issue that was debated uh, so passionately this time uh, was mining sector, and. Mm. Uh, audit report uh, that was submitted to the National Council came up with so many issues with the mining sector. Watching the deliberations going on in the National Council, we almost felt that uh, the National Council members were so passionate in uh, <coughs> voicing out uh, your concerns. Almost to the extent that uh, people felt that now the National Council members are not scared, not apprehensive about raising the issues because these mining companies are owned by all these big, big influential businessmen, business people. You had no reservations in raising your voice. So that actually made people believe that uh, the House is gaining so much of confidence on one hand. On the other, uh, it also made people feel that some of the National Council members are actually against those affluent uh, uh, group of the society. What do you say, sir? Uh, you are really in the op op uh, showing an open-ended question actually here. Uh, I don't know how much individually one can argue, but as a house of review, I think up until now the record and the, you know, the behavior would uh, sh prove that National Council submitted everything based on issue. You know, it, if, you, if you're worried about who are involved and who would be impacted, then it, it will really compromise the overall objective of having a second house, National Council, as a house of review. Uh, coming to let me say to the point uh, mining and quarrying, yes, you're right. Uh, after the National Council had uh, followed up on a resolution issued during the earlier term, you know, we uh, we raised a, a need. We recognize a need to understand holistic understanding of socio-economic and environmental impact of mining and quarrying, yes. based on some principles, by the way. So one first principle is <coughs> uh, our constitution provides that a river, a forest piece of rock, anything, you know, natural resources belong to state, which means to the people. And these have to be regulated by law. And secondly, these natural resources are non-renewable in nature. So whenever we operate, when we use this, it has to be done sustainably. Yes. And thirdly, we want to make sure that <coughs> the benefits derived from these, the use of natural resources should be 
equitably distributed amongst the population. So based on these three principles, these three un understandings, the House have been you know, following up and then last year we agreed that uh, in order to understand the socio-economic benefit in terms of contribution, you know, tax contribution, royalty payment and all these aspects, I think it was best the Royal Audit Authority who, yes. who should take up this assignment. Firstly, it was their mandate, secondly, they had, cap they had capacity. So we requested the RA to conduct this and they issued a very comprehensive report, very comprehensive and a hard fact report uh, this year and on which we followed up, we reviewed and then <coughs> uh, we have again issued some eight point eight recommendations today on this. Yes. So, so many issues. Um, one is tax evasion, another one is the salary of uh, the CEOs of these uh, companies, uh, board members, uh, some contributions made to the board members. Uh, there are so many other issues, uh, some not uh, paying uh, the environment restoration, security, uh, and also there are so many other issues which I, I really can't spell out uh, everything here. But what actually went wrong like, in all these issues? Who is actually responsible to monitor and uh, take stock of whatever is ha happening within uh, these companies? Like? Okay. Uh, broadly, uh, there are two issues I understood personally. Firstly, uh, lack of provisions in our existing legislations. If our legislations do not contain certain specific uh, issues, things to cover, things to monitor, things to supervise, then the officials in the field who are implementing are handicapped, you know, because they don't have a provision to rely and then to, you know, and then to implement. Secondly, even if the laws are clear, there are certain, you know, blatant uh, uh, lack of compliance, you know, blatant failure to comply with. So these are two issues broadly. That's why. The recommendations, I will, I will, if you categorize under these two, the, the House, as recommended by the audit report, we are going to pursue on pushing the government to put, to you know, push for legislation changes, amendments. For yes. example, the Companies Act of 2000, uh, it's uh, not that comprehensive, so to say, in today's, uh, uh, in, in today's practical conditions. You will see so many areas, so many provisions which do not cover so many uh, conducts. Yes. Secondly, the Income Tax Act. Uh, and the income tax rules of 2001, the act and the rule, these two are also not consistent yes. on some front. Uh, thirdly, uh, who would implement, who, are, who is the proponent of Companies Act? One would expect the company registrar, which is under Economic Affairs Ministry. So we have to beef up the division. And uh, third, uh, fourthly, again coming back to Income Tax Act, our tax, tax men, tax officials, have they really done their due diligence during the time of, you know, scrutinizing the tax yes. returns. So there are so many areas, as you said, uh, ranging from high salary paid to the CEOs and the board members to donations to the board directors to uh, evasion of tax by one or two directors but not declaring the income tax. So the host of uh, observations have been in this report. So now it would be now safe to say that uh, the problems are not categorically with the miners or the companies alone. But uh, there are so many shortcomings even with the legal framework. Yes, yes, that's quite true. Uh, the legal framework, the legal infrastructure which we have are not comprehensive, not yes. exhaustive. And we have, to, we have to amend these laws at the earliest. And then also we need uh, something like antitrust law. It's more of a competition law which will protect the minority interest, uh, minority shareholders. You know, that, uh, in a public company, it's just, it's just not just a few promoters who have interest, but public who have shares there and how do we protect these uh, shareholders but if if, the, if you just uh, if you wait for them to participate in the board meeting and give their say because of the lesser number of shares they hold the votes will be very less so we need a, a legislation to protect these uh, group of shareholders and um, also to make sure that uh, those people those uh, the, the directors ceos conduct their you know day to day conducts Honestly, sincerely, there should be a good corporate code of governance in our system, which is uh, more or less lacking today. Yes. More than fixing accountability uh, to the companies and proprietors, it would be more important to fix the accountability of those people who are trusted by the, entrusted by the state, by the public, by the civil service to look after and monitor and evaluate the functioning of these companies. Will there be accountability fixation on these people? 
uh, these public servants who in, if at all failed in <coughs> their responsibilities as it is strongly recommended in the audit report by the RAA uh, national council had also submitted uh, recommendations would be submitting recommendations to the government which uh, emphasize on fixing accountability on those officials who have failed in their day to day duties for instance uh, which comes to my mind just now is in the case of DGM you know they have to fill a, a field inspector which is supposed to be in the mine sites yes. uh, whenever a truck carries a certain minerals they have to issue tra transport permit yes. you know after measuring how much a truck is carrying and then a, a truck driver will carry this uh, will carry the load with truck uh, transport permit and then wherever they are going taking their load to whenever they unload in the stockyard it has to be reconciled in there so audit findings one of the audit findings is uh DGM Ministry of Economic Affairs have said because of shortage of manpower they could not field enough uh, field inspectors. So on some occasions they have even issued transport permits which were already signed. And then the truck drivers they might have gone to the site you know carrying the transport permit already signed by somebody and it's, it's up to them how much they would load and how much they would carry, where they would carry that. and. Uh, and on certain occasions also these are not reconciled with what is actually received in the stockyard. So from the basic inadequate manpower shortage to uh, non-declaring tax by the directors and all these are coming uh, because our legal infrastructure are not adequate. So the recommendation from National Council would be like, you need to come up with alternatives. Oh uh, yes, uh, we so many recommendations but one, one, recomm one very big recommendation we are making is uh, as already initiated by government to form something called state mining corporation you know uh, we we have also reinforced this uh, initiative from the government and we have recomm we are recommending to start state mining corporation and to take over all the mining uh, mining activities they should be involved in primary mining sector and wherever there is value addition the private sector can participate uh, when we when you support this national uh, nationalization of mines, mining companies, it's uh, although there it, it it will bring about to major administrative and managerial changes. More than that, is more of an ideological uh, change. You know, uh, you you'll remember uh, prior to 2007 when the supply of sand and boulders were in private sector, the prices were so high. In 2007, before the formation of Natural Resources Development Corporation Limited (NRDCL). The price, if you lift a truck of price from Wangdi, you know, to reach to Thimbu, it was costing more than 5,000, you know. Yes. And then after, immediately next year, 2008, the price dropped to 650, imagine. So private sectors have been given chance by the state, by the government, and wherever there appeared, you know, this advent, there appeared uh, inefficiency and then the loss to the state as a whole. So it was in the wisdom of, uh, of the state and advice by His Majesty the King after forming the NRDCL. People, today people are enjoying sand at a very much affordable price. And this is not only helping individuals but also helping government in saving. You know. So equally on this front uh, we hope uh, after we nationalize all these mines uh, there will be more economy and e efficiency in production. Will it be easy to do so? Uh, it is easier said and than will done. will it be fair <coughs> to those mining companies or proprietors who have already slogged so much to establish all this? I think in terms of uh, <coughs> really talking about fairness, it, it, it's, it is very much fair uh, for government to take over because they have been given chance, they have been operating it, they have been minting money, yes. they have made enough profits, although they might have invested, but they have made enough money uh, and then if, they pr if, if it is again proven in future and if, if they continue in a similar manner where the state has been benefited very less compared to what individuals have been benefited with, so it's, it's only uh, prudent to hand over this to government. Yes. So one issue, now moving on, one issue uh, finally is raised during this session to the Honourable uh, Minister of Information and Communication was regarding the domestic air services. Uh, I heard one of the Honourable Members of National Council make a very big statement and that is government is almost dictated by uh, the company. Private airlines. Yeah, private airlines. What do you think, sir? Uh, in the wisdom of government, you know, we have now built uh, Yamunpula Airport, Bumtang, and one in Gelifu. Of course, uh, two airports are under maintenance just now. Uh, I think the government should be firm enough to 
abide by the initial agreement, understanding between the private company, private airlines and the government. And uh, it, it, is, it should be the government who should follow up stringently, strictly and then make sure that they comply with. It is, uh, I think NC will still follow up with government. We did raise a question with the Honorable Minister of Economic, uh, Information and Communication. Um, yes, we have uh, acknowledged that they have failed to keep up with their commitment. It was supposed to be October 2014 that they should start the domestic domestic service. Yet, we don't see a private airlines flying to Bumtang, for instance. So, this is a concern NC would take up and we have been taking up and this is not a closed chapter. So, with reference to the same issue, a parallel was drawn and uh, I have on occasions uh, witnessed that uh, the National Council members raised this issue saying that one example cited was uh, the recent issue in Wamro where construction took place just near the road and uh, that construction was dismantled by the Dunkak authorities because of some legal issues. Now one issue that uh, the National Council raised was is there two set of are there two set of laws or rules for rich and the poor? I just want to ask you, what do you think? Because you are the ones who are framing laws. Do we have two set of laws, one for the rich, one for the poor? Uh, yeah, it's a unfortunate, uh, unfortunate uh, event to witness in Mohamrong where private uh, buildings have been dismantled because it fell within that 50 feet, uh, you know, 50 feet area on both sides of the road. Um, following the same principle, you know, the NC have been, we have been doing on following the same principle and that's why we, we stick by, you know, I think people are drawing parallel to BOIC. If this is illegal, should we frame a law to legalize something illegal? That's a debate in the house and I'm sure that will continue. Uh, if you look at the larger picture again, uh, especially today when our economy is running through stress, it's uh, quite difficult to make a decision, you know. If you if you stop BOIC's activities today because there's no ad supporting act, it will be impacting, affecting many people. So these are some uh, very debatable, very difficult decision uh, point to decide, to uh, really decide what next to do. That's why we we have recommended few few recommendations to the government to look for a way forward, and this should uh, hopefully solve so many issues. So what happened in Wamrong may not be unfortunate if this cuts across all business uh, citizens. Wamrong could be in the, uh, isolated even, I am not sure, that, because that, that law was very clear. You know, that that yes. law was very much clear. And if somebody is willfully violating law, one can, cannot help it but help. But if there is no specific contents in the law, then people try to take chance. Yes, this sir. is what had happened in the mining sector. Yes, sir. Uh, Honorable Jimmy Rinjan, thank you so much for your time. This brings us to the end of the, we couldn't, uh, the English session. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.